It's Saturday, June 14th, 2025. It's actually the 165th day of the year, and we've got some activity starting to ramp up out there, so let's talk about our forecast. Okay, so let's start off by talking about our upper level pattern. Uh, one thing that we definitely have going on right now is a big high pressure center down here in the southwest. This is allowing for some really high temperatures to set up down here, and also kind of what we call the ring of fire to set up, where we've got tons of storms coming over the Rockies and then sliding down to the south and east. We've seen this over the past couple of days and we're going to continue to see this over the next little bit but something is about to change here it's actually going to make the weather a little bit more interesting and a key driver is the jet stream we're going to have a persistent deep upper level flow up here in the pacific that's going to kind of push some energy over the rockies and allow for these more complex bursts of energy to make it into the central united states we call these short waves and that's going to allow for some more intense severe weather to take place especially in the central u.s and especially as we go into next week. You can see we've got a little bit of an interesting thing over here around Chicago on Wednesday, and we're going to talk a lot more about that right here in a second. But the big key thing here, once again, is that big area of high pressure and how it's going to move off to the east, and that ridge is going to kind of break down and allow for a bunch of heat to continue to compile over here, and there's just going to be a ton of moisture and energy for anything that's coming out of the west to slam into. And speaking of heat, moisture, and energy, let's dive into that a little bit. Here's the forecast for from the GFS for tomorrow around 11 p.m. Eastern. Things are going to be hot down here in the southwest. We're talking about over 110 degrees. We do have some heat advisories uh, in effect over here. And really quick, speaking of heat advisories, we've actually got the first ever heat advisory issued for portions of Alaska over here around Fairbanks as temperatures are going to be making it up into the 80s. According to the GFS model here, just to the west of Fairbanks, we could be talking about 85 degrees. There's a couple of models that were showing, you know, uh, in excess of 90 degrees, which is, you know, somewhat un common for Alaska so just an interesting thing there but notice how we go from Monday into Tuesday how we've got this big area of warmth that's trying to advect farther to the north you know we've got 90 degree temperatures up here in uh, portions of Nebraska and South Dakota on Monday but what happens as we go into Tuesday is we've got a little bit of a cold front that tries to come down and you can really see that on Wednesday as those high temperatures don't make it up into Iowa for example in fact uh, we're gonna have trouble getting out of the mid 60s in South Dakota on Wednesday and that cold front coming down is going to run into, once again, lots of energy and moisture. So watch those deep blues work up farther to the north as we go into the future. Here we are on Tuesday around 5 p.m., 9 p.m. Eastern. We're going to have dew points well up into the 70s over here in Kansas, back down into Oklahoma. And then over here in Colorado, for example, we're way down into the 20s. So we've got a pretty good setup here where we've got very moist air on the eastern side and then very dry air on the western side. And everywhere in between here is going to be kind of primed for the potential for severe weather. And you throw the cape on top of that, the convective available potential energy, which is going to be out the wazoo, by the way, and everything is just coming together for a pretty good chance of severe weather. More organized severe weather as we go uh, into Tuesday and Wednesday. Look here, we're talking about maybe 3,000, 4,000 joules per kilogram of uh, cape up here near the cold front as it sags down to the south. And cape, if you didn't know, is just what we call thunderstorm fuel. The higher that number, the more unstable the atmosphere is and notice how it actually moves off to the east a little bit as we go into the day on Wednesday okay so we are going to have lots of thunderstorm fuel here and we're going to have that wave of energy moving in from the west and when you put all that together it leads to a significant severe weather threat and the storm prediction center is highlighting that on the Tuesday day four outlook uh, we've got supercells and line segments possible as a cold front is going to be dipping into Kansas and like we just talked about it's going to be meeting up with that juicy unstable air mass and that's going to lead to a more organized severe weather threat. Now, it's summer. We've got isolated pockets of severe weather that will happen every day, but this looks like a more trackable synoptic kind of pattern that's actually going to lead to thunderstorms that we can see uh, pretty distant into the future. This is the day four outlook. It'll change as we go forward, but it's actually not common during this time of year for us to be able to see these threats uh, so far in the future. The main thing is definitely going to be large hail and damaging winds, but we can't rule out a tornado or two, and that's something that we're going to have to figure out as we get closer to the actual event happening. And once again, as we go into the future, all of that instability and heat and all that uh, energy is going to be moving off to the east, and so will the severe weather threat. In fact, on Wednesday, day five, we're going to have a widespread storm set up over here in the lower Missouri Valley, over into the Great Lakes, and this is going to be another day of severe thunderstorm potential, and it looks like this will be impacting the Chicago area down through St. Louis, back down into Springfield, so it uh, looks like a pretty dangerous day of severe weather, but once again, the main threat looks like it's going to be hail and damaging winds. We don't know for sure what the tornado 
situation is going to look like, but I'll update you as we get closer. Now, that's the main setup as we go forward. And uh, the reason I wanted to start with that is because it looks organized, okay? The threats for severe weather on the day four and five uh, outlooks, that's something tangible that I can show you on the jet stream, and it kind of makes sense, all right? The next three days, they don't make sense, okay? And we're going to have just pockets of uh, severe weather that blow up all over the place, and it's actually going to be really hard to nail down exactly who's going to get what. But the Storm Prediction Center here is trying with their day one outlook. We've got a slight risk of severe weather over here in uh, portions of Montana, down into Nebraska, a little bit of Colorado is included in that. And we have a huge marginal risk that uh, takes up about 500,000 square miles and includes about 25 million people all the way down to the Mexico border and just about up to Canada. The big threat here is going to be big hail, okay? I think that that's our main thing. We're going to see an isolated tornado or two over here, maybe, but uh, big hail is going to be possible today over here. And then there's actually going to be a decent little chance of severe weather around Washington, D.C., down to Virginia Beach today as well. Looking at tomorrow, yes, I switched it, if you couldn't tell, because <laughs> it looks almost exactly the same. Tomorrow, we're going to have a similar situation where we've got this flow coming over the Rockies, meeting that warm, unstable air, and uh, that's going to lead to some more big hailers over here from Montana down into Kansas. And uh, we're going to have a continued threat of some isolated severe weather over here, maybe uh, in North Carolina, around Raleigh and Greenville, up towards Richmond, Virginia. And then things get a little bit more organized, I guess you could say, uh, over here on the day three outlook. This is uh, Monday. The Twin Cities are going to be in the bullseye here, uh, right around Minneapolis, St. Paul. I think that you guys have got a good chance of seeing some severe weather on this day. Uh, this is kind of, this is going to be like the appetizer round before our main event, which I believe is going to be uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. So this is uh, for Monday. Supercells with uh, damaging winds and hail, that's going to be the main threat. And once again, we've got a huge marginal risk that surrounds that, that goes from Canada all the way down to Oklahoma City. And we're going to see isolated pockets of severe weather across that entire area. All right, so let's look at the chaos that is the HRRR over the next, uh, you know, day and a half or so. Once again, it's really hard to predict these mesoscale accident systems where there just happens to be a cold pocket of air that lingers around in a certain area. And then as the sun comes up and the, and the, and the atmosphere heats up, we just see a, a big area of storms and, and they go in an unpredicted direction. And it's summer. It's really hard to use the models for any sort of guidance here. But it does look like there's going to be some activity around Houston today, maybe some strong thunderstorms making it all the way up there towards Shreveport at some point. We might even see a rumble. We might even hear a rumble of thunder and see some distant lightning in Dallas uh, this evening. Uh, you can see that we're going to have those isolated showers and thunderstorms over here in Alabama, Mississippi, down into Georgia and Florida as well. A little bit more, uh, you know, organized, or, or I guess uh, uh, there's a better chance of some convection actually happening over here around Myrtle Beach up into the Outer Banks because we are going to have that uh, onshore flow. I, I do think that there's a decent chance that we have some severe weather around Washington, D.C. as well. And, and once again, I think the, the main threat here is going to be hail and some very heavy rain. We've been dealing with some uh, flash flooding over here. There's going to be some really efficient rainfall rates associated with these storms. So get ready for these. And it looks like they're going to continue potentially well into the early morning hours tomorrow. It'll be 4 or 5 a.m. before this is completely out of our hair. But uh, notice how the storms really get going around 7, 8, 9 p.m. Peak uh, activity time around Washington, D.C. will probably be right around midnight. And then we're also going to see some storms over here in Kentucky, Indiana, and Ohio as that swirling area of low pressure moves due east. Uh, and it uh, looks like even my neck of the woods could see some storms maybe around 11 p.m. tonight. But the main thing that we're going to be watching over the next couple of days is in this area as we do have some uh, energy moving over the Rockies into this very warm, moist, uh, you know, unstable air mass that's been building up here. Notice how uh, we're going to have that threat today. And then tomorrow, I think we actually have a little bit of a better threat uh, around Billings down towards Rapid City. And there's even going to be a chance of some storms between Rochester and uh, back here towards Omaha and Sioux City. And then there's a really interesting feature that pops up tonight uh, around Tulsa and moves down towards Oklahoma City as well. This is another one of those things where this could happen or it just couldn't. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those accidents that pops up on the HRRR or this exact same situation ha could happen, but maybe it happens a little bit farther to the east or west. So big question mark for a lot of these little systems like this. But everybody uh, in this whole area here should be on the lookout for some isolated strong storms over the next 36 hours. And this is going to come along with some heavy rainfall threats as well, uh, especially tomorrow. Uh, we have that slight risk of excessive rainfall over here from the mountains of West Virginia down towards the Outer Banks. I do think 
think that uh, this is probably going to be a pretty dangerous situation for anybody that ends up with more than three to four inches of rain in a short period of time, especially in the mountains of Appalachia. I'm concerned about you guys in Beckley over there towards Charlottesville, up towards Harrisonburg, uh, maybe even towards Morgantown. This is the kind of weather that every summer it causes some sort of devastating flash flood in one community. This is what we're dealing with here. So if you live in a flood prone area, get ready for that. Uh, we're also looking at some potential flooding around Joplin, down towards Little Rock, up towards Springfield. So get ready for that as well. And then looking forward, uh, that ridge in the southwest and all the heat that's building up in the central U.S., even though it kind of keeps getting knocked down by these short waves and these cold fronts, I do think that in the future, specifically between the 8 to 14 day time period, a lot of that heat's going to get suppressed and, and kind of uh, more centered around the eastern United States. And I think we're going to be very much above average in the Ohio Valley, in the mid-Atlantic regions, once again, especially in that 8 to 14 day time period. So that means starting eight days from now and lasting 14 days from now. In fact, look at the predicted high temperatures, specifically 10 days from now on uh, June 24th. We could have uh, temperatures exceeding 100 degrees over here in Virginia, Washington, D.C., 101 degrees. We could be talking about 100 degree temperatures all the way up there towards New York. So this is a forecast. It'll change a lot, obviously, but uh, uh, it does look like some excessive heat is going to be possible in the east as we go uh, forward, especially right there between maybe June 20th through June 28th or so. I would be watching out for that on the east coast. And of course, this time of year, I've always got my eyes on the tropics. There's nothing going on in the Gulf, the Caribbean, or the Atlantic right now. In the very near future, there might be something for us to talk about. But we do have Tropical Storm Dahlia down here to the south and west of Mexico, currently with uh, up to 58 mile per hour winds. It looks like it's going to generally weaken as it moves off to the north and west. So this is going to uh, maybe pose a heavy rain threat to some portions of Mexico. But for the most part, this is not going to hurt anybody. There is another area of interest back here that we're watching, and I will update you on shortly. Shortly. But uh, for right now, that's about all we've got to talk about in the tropics. And that's all the weather talk I have for you today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And uh, we're, it's probably going to be one of those situations where we do daily video updates because we've got that day four and day five outlook. And I wouldn't even be surprised if we ended up having to do a live stream, especially on day five. So make sure you're subscribed, turn those notifications on, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.